Now we're going to extend our model of imperfect competition to address a very basic question and a very interesting one, which is why are there brands in the market and what are the effects in competition? So consider the fact the, the market for cola type sodas. Companies like Coke and Pepsi invest enormous amounts of money in marketing to try to get you to convince you that the two products are different even though they are basically both caffeinated sugary water. Does this matter? How does it affect consumer well-being? How does it affect the, the outcome generated by the market? These are the questions that this model of monopolistic competition that we're going to study addresses. So here is the idea, a simple, there are very versions of the model, I'm going to show you the simplest one, and here is the idea in a nutshell. Suppose that there are at least two firms that the aggregate inverse demand function has this linear form that we have been using, and that the firm's technology looks like this. They produce Q, the good, every unit of good, at constant marginal cost of mu dollars per unit. However, they have two choices. They can either, in addition to, to how much to produce, they can either pay a fixed cost, sorry, a semi-fixed cost of F dollars to create a brand. And what this fixed cost is, it gets consumers to think that these units that they produce are of this special brand of type firm, of the type that this firm produces, or they can not pay it, and they don't have a brand, and then they can set Q equal to zero. So this model of monopolistic competition, the simple version, is a model in which only branded goods are sold. Now, the key assumption of the model is that brands split the demand equally and are monopolist within their share. Now, I will derive the math for you in a second, but let's think about the key idea. The basic idea is that if there are two brands, let's say, each of them gets half of the consumers and half of their demand, and somehow the branding expenditures, this semi-fixed cost, convinces the consumer that these are unique goods, that these are the only goods that the consumer can possibly buy. And since that brand is the unique to that firm, and that firm is the only one who sells that brand, they are a monopolist within that market. Now let's solve the model. So since the firms split the demand equally, um, we need to characterize what is the demand that they face. But before I have to define this variable, which is called in, which is equal to the number of firms that create a brand and therefore produce a positive amount. Then if this is the number of firms in, then what we're going to have is that each firm faces the man P max minus in times MQ. Let me denote this by I to simplify the notation. And one way of thinking about it is that if this is the demand, the demand for the full market, basically every one of the brands in gets an equal share. So these are equal shares, and there are I of them, I equal shares. Now, we know that each firm faces the demand and acts as a monopolist, so that implies that each firm sets marginal revenue equals marginal cost within its demand. Now, we know that the marginal revenue for something like that looks like P 
Tmax minus 2imq, I've seen that many times, equals mu, which implies that the quantity produced by each monopolistic competition firm that is in the market is going to be equal to Pmax minus mu divided by 2im. Now, this also implies that the total quantity that is produced, which is just i times qmc, is equal to Pmax minus mu divided by 2m, which notice that is equal to the quantity that would be produced if one single firm would be a monopolist in this market. And this also implies substituting back into the aggregate demand function that the total price, so the, the price in monopolistic competition is going to be equal to the price in monopoly, and this is equal to P max divided by 2 plus Q max divided by 2. Now, let's compute what is the profit for a monopolistic competition firm that is in, which is basically going to give you equal to the profit of the monopolist, since we know that the total quantity is equal to the monopolist, divided by the number of firms minus the that are in minus the fixed cost that you need to pay. And if you do the algebra, this is, gives you P max minus mu square divided by 4mi minus f. Now, a basic question <coughs> is what's the number of brands that get created? We're going to den denote by IMC. And I hope it's easy for you to see that as the number of firms increases, the price per firm in goes down. And eventually, there are enough brands inside that becomes um, a zero, negative, sorry. So the number of firms that are, of brands that get created is the maximum number, the maximum integer, such that I Let me write it differently in case you're not familiar with this set notation. Such that P max minus mu square over 4mi is greater than f. So brands are going to keep entering as long as the profits are positive. Remember, for a firm that doesn't enter, they get zero profits in this model. So brands are, are going to uh, brands are going to keep entering until that condition is violated, and that's going to give you the equilibrium number of brands. Notice one thing, so remark. Um, the first is that there are multiple equilibria. Why? The model pings uniquely the number of brands, but not which specific firms are the brand, the, the, the ones that create brands. So basically, for example, if there are three firms and the number of firms that, that, that brands get created are two, you can have the brands by FIM1 and FIM2, FIM1 and FIM3, or FIM2 and FIM3. The other remark that I wanted to do re re relates to the logic of equilibria. Notice why not all of the firms may create a brand is because they take as given that some of the other firms have already created a brand, and given that, it's not profitable to do so. This really relies on equilibrium having this property that we have been using throughout this unit of taking as given the actions of the other people, anticipating correctly and maximizing with respect to that. What's the dead weight loss from monopolistic competition? We know that the quantity total in monopolistic competition is equal to the quantity total in monopoly. So this implies, it should be obvious to you at this point in the course, that the dead weight loss in monopolistic competition is going to be equal to the dead weight loss in monopoly with one twist, which is that the firms have to spend this fixed, semi-fixed cost money to create their brands, and that has no social value whatsoever. So in addition, there is this loss of I monopolistic competition times F. And if you do the math, this is equal to P max minus mu square divided by 8m plus i m c f. Now let me make several remarks about this. The first is, in oligopoly, the dead weight loss goes to zero as the number of firms increases. 
in monopolistic competition, debt weight loss increases with number of firms in, with number of brands. So it's very, very different. The second is, let me highlight again, the semi-fixed cost of brand creation are social waste. Why are they social waste? Because they don't really add to the consumption utility of the individuals. They fool them into thinking that if they eat that brand or that other brand, they will get better utility because otherwise they assume they get zero. But um, but they don't they don't really exchange experience utility. And the third one is that there is a relationship. Um, or, or before we saw this idea of um, decision utility versus experience utility, and that there were situations in which this could be different. This is the case in monopolistic competition. In particular, what the the, the, the branding does is uh, is get the consumer to think that their decision utility is equal to B of Q if they eat if consume brand and zero otherwise. But this is not true. The true experience utility is the same in either way. So this basically in the monopolistic competition there is simply an assumption that there is a gap between decision utility and experience utility.